So are we ready? So we'll do the clap. So we'll go one, one two, two, three. three. Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette. My name is Brian. And today you're in for a very special episode of Board Game Inquisition, where once a year, myself and my husband team up to bring you what we think are some of the most fun and entertaining board game awards around. Yay! Yay! So we're calling them the Inquisition Awards. They were formerly known as the Golden Board Game Award, but as my husband highlighted, gold is kind of out of date at this point and very very common it's platinum. You know, platinum maybe we should have gone for platinum awards but either way we wanted um you know a slot at the end of the year where both of us get to talk about some of the games we've played some of the amazing things we've had in sort of nice fun categories um so of course i don't play board games on my own my other half brian will willingly plays board games with me so as always i think it's fun to have him on at least you know one show a year yeah. to kind of you know give a give voice to all opinions of all games of all kinds yeah get me out of my box <laughs> he'll keep you in a box <laughs> um right okay so um we're going to start in we have 10 categories and of course i want you to play along at home and if you enjoyed this video why not like or subscribe to it i've got a whole middle-aged white guy bonus with me wow i yeah. know right I, I should get way more subscribers right now because i got just the lady talking about board games you have a real important opinion that people will value never my opinion is <laughs> always <the worst. laughs> it's always important <laughs> So what's our first category? It's the best puzzle. The, yes. So we want to talk about the games that have the best puzzles. So how did you approach this one, Brian? What were we? I went. Games? What game wrecks my head? <laughs> so you went for something that was so puzzly it was difficult. Yes. Okay. Me, on the other hand, I went for a game that I thought had the smartest puzzle, um, or the one that I thought was the most interesting to play, not necessarily the most difficult. Okay. So I went with Trash. <laughs> Trash is a unique Steppenfeld game. Mm -hmm. And it has this weird system where you're moving these pegs around the circle and you're going, oh God, so this peg, if I pick this one, I can move three pegs, but that will put four pegs in that one, which means I can't do this other action. And it really works out. But when you get it going right, it is amazing because you know you can just go combo one action to another. It is a really, really difficult puzzle. Mm, okay. Trash it is a resource management type of game in which you're going up various tracks and you are a Roman and how you decide which part of the board you're going to interact with is based entirely on your own personal roundel in which you have various coloured little pieces and you need to get them into the same slot to be able to perform that particular action, right? Yeah. So there are really, really cool things like you can go and be in charge of the Senate. You can go and make buildings. You can go down to the trading ships yeah. and the boats. You can take over parts of Europe. Oh, you can Europe. move this little guy around Europe, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. move the guy around Europe. So This is why I'm not booking. <laughs> <laughs> my opinion is you know, more you, no. <laughs> you see you focus on the mechanics I'm just I was trying to imagine if you hadn't played Trajan before what would you have liked to hear here people haven't played Trajan go I... buy Trajan now <laughs> if you like heavy euros um it's I see I don't know if I want to call it a heavy euro either would you call it a heavy or a midweight I would call it midweight. The rule book is under 20 pages. <laughs> like, I think there's a lot of thinking to go on in Trajan, as you say. It's, yeah. it's about the puzzle, because it really is. It's about yeah. that puzzle, about matching up those colours to be able to make things happen. Yeah. It's not difficult to explain, it's just difficult to do. Yes, exactly. And I think those are some of the finest games. Yeah. Plus, we love Stefan Feld. Um, he's, he's, he's a fine, fine board game designer. We love him in our house. So, of course, we have to have something here. I'm not surprised it's Trajan. Yeah. So, if you like something that's a little bit brave and burny um, and has a really interesting puzzle, because there's nothing else quite like it. No. No. Um, then this is something you probably might want to have a little look at. And Five Tribes? What about Five Tribes? That's your, that's your pick. It is. I would like to have introduced it, but okay. <laughs> So, my nominee for this category is Five Tribes um, from Bruno Casala and Days of Wonder. And this is a game about, well, grouping people together um, of the same colour in various tribes. Um, I don't know how well the theme actually fits this one when I think back upon it. Like, it certainly looks like it's set in uh, an Arabian desert, you've got sand going on, there are nomads, and you're trying to group them together. But how it works is that you start with a, a board that is full of different coloured meeples, and to be able to gather them up, you have to leave a, a trail 
scale of meeples as you move around till you gather up ones of the same colour and can do some sort of cool action with them. Um, the reason I think this game is such a good puzzle is because it's actually a very simple concept. The idea of I'll pick up this many meeples, that's how many spaces I can move and then I must match the colour when I finish. Um, but it's so, so difficult. Um, and just looking at all of the possibilities is quite brain bursting. And God forbid you play with other people, meaning what you thought you might do on your turn is suddenly taken away from you and you have to think on the fly. Um, but overall, I think it's one of the most interesting puzzles that we, we have. It is a good puzzle. It's very similar to Trash Action now that I think of it, because both of them involve <laughs> picking up cut, cut, <laughs> colour meeples or, or pegs and moving around the boards. <laughs> Yes, so we move coloured things around boards. Yes, yeah. that gives a lot of games a lot of things in common. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I suppose maybe it is kind of a, you know, you move, kind of weave your way around the board kind of feeling. But it's this very cool spatial puzzle because you get to see it in front of you. You don't have to work it out in your mind like you might with Trajan. And you get camels. Yes, there are camels. There are also palaces and pantries, which really adds to a puzzle. Yeah, it makes them look sure. very pretty on the table. It does indeed. So those are our nominees for um, the best puzzle. Um, I'd like to hear what yours are. Let's know, let us know now. Write, write, in, write in the comments now um, and see what yeah. you get. And what are we going to give? Who's going to get the winning And score? the winner is... Trajan? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I won't fight I won't fight you on that one. I think there's something so simplistic but so clever about that puzzle in trash and trash um, and that's also one that really boggles the mind. So I definitely think it's a good puzzle. Okay. Yeah. Ready cool. for the next section? Right, let's move on to the next section. Okay, so a word the second. This is for what we're calling um, the Undiscovered Gem category. So these are games we've played that we don't think get enough love or enough people know about or have tried. Yeah. You know, stuff that's gone under the radar, right? So exactly. Is that yeah. where you were that's going with this? That's where we're going with this. In ones that you go, well, you'd see this in a bargain bin somewhere on a shelf and you'd never have heard of it and you'd never pick it up. Hmm, yeah, definitely. Um, the, like, I see sometimes you forget that just because something is cheap or unpopular that it doesn't mean you know you may not like it yourself yeah. just because it didn't suit the masses doesn't mean it didn't suit it couldn't suit you right exactly yeah yeah exactly um so i'm gonna jump on board here with my nominee um and this is a game that i harp on and on and on and on about because it's just so good um and this is saikatsu from idw games and it's a bird game yay not <laughs> Pete Mets. not Pete Mets. No, it's a it's it's psychatsu. Um and this is a game of um matching beautiful birds and beautiful flowers. Um and all of your pieces come on these beautiful discs. All the clay I, tiles that just I make don't this. know if they're clay, they're like resin or plastic or something, right? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever it makes a they have clacky noise. tiles that kinda of like pogs or you know, poker yeah. chips and they clack off each other. And each one has a bird and a floral wreath. And you have a grid of a board where you're trying to create lines yeah. um, to be able to score points for flowers that you get in lines. And then you also score points when you put birds down that match of the same type. Yeah. So you want to make whole trains of the birds that will match. Flocks of birds. Flocks of birds. I like that. Trains of birds. Maybe a bird could drive a train. No. Don't let the pigeon drive the train. No. No. <laughs> but um, it's a really fun game. Now, we played it too. I don't know if I'd want to play it with three. I haven't played it with three once or twice. Yeah. It's just a real brain burn because when you put down your piece, you put it into your opponent's columns as well. Yes. Which means that when you're playing three pairs, you have to watch two pairs of those columns. And it just becomes a terrible puzzle to try and work out who's in the lead and whether it's worth helping play A or player B. One on one, it's hard enough. One versus two would be really difficult. Mm, um, I suppose that's the way you approach a game. I would never have thought of what everyone else was doing. I just focus on what I'm doing and making that's sure not I true. interfere with what my opponent's doing when necessary. <laughs> um, mostly, I just want to connect the pretty birds of the colours. I think it's a great game for two player. I think it's lovely and it's quick as well. It, it only takes like 10, 15 minutes to play. Yeah. Um, and it's satisfying. It's the kind of game that I don't mind losing at because you feel like you're, well, you're getting points all of the time, so you feel like you're doing good things. And you can see the, the game unfold in front of you as and you play really it. Pretty. Yeah, and it does look really, really pretty. Um, so yeah, so I'm a big fan of Sakatsu. I think more people should try it out. I don't know why it doesn't get more buzz. Um, so that is my promo slot of, of this year, Sakatsu. <laughs> So okay, my nominee is Sakura from Osprey Games, yeah. designed by the 
the great doctor well this year hey. this is the only reason we picked up this game <laughs> we saw yeah, we were true. buying something else on amazon and it came up in the suggested games and we went what the hell let's throw it in the thing show it worst comes to worst it's only was it five pounds or ten pounds it was, it was very yeah it was it's absolutely cheap. cheap so mm -hmm. we picked it up the original game that we bought, I don't remember because this game just outshines it completely. Yeah. It's this really intelligent. Um, so, and everyone's turn they play a single card, and the card will have an initiative value and a move and two moves. You see a move for how far the emperor moves and how far you move. So you're in an emperor's garden, and you're trying to follow him around. Yeah. But um, not overtake him. Not overtake him. You want to be the closest to the emperor without touching the emperor. So you're in a little train on a kind of a straight line path. A straight line, garden. yeah. And the aim of the game is to use cards to move up and down the path, or to move your opponents up yeah. and down the path. To ma manipulate the queue. Yeah, to manipulate the queue exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's just so good. And even the two, you have two player. There is a. AI that plays and mm. that AI is really intelligent. He's so that. smart. Oh my god, he's almost beaten us a number yeah. of times. That, that, that random card off the top of the deck is better than what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and sure, I, uh, I, I yeah. like this one a lot too. I think yeah, and it works really fun. well with, with large groups of players. It's nice, mm -hmm. it's fun. The It usually takes what, 15 20 minutes to play. Even that much, I wouldn't have even said that much. I guess mm. it depends on what the cards give you, right? Yeah. And how far that Emperor feels like going. It, but um, it's just such a fun little thing, and it's so simple. It is literally a game of reorganizing the line. Yeah, it's just some kind But it doesn't of... feel random. I don't know why it doesn't. It feels like you're in it a bit of It gives you good control. agency, because you, you have control of your move. You can see where your initiative is going to go. You can kind mm -hmm. of guess where yeah. your points are going to go. And you know yeah. when the Emperor is going to score. Yeah. And then you mm -hmm. go, oh, you played that one. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. I'm going to have to meet the Emperor and be put back in shame. Yes. The shame. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the car. So who's the winner? The winner is, I suppose, it's a Katsu. Yeah, it's a cracker of like, games. It's up with Azul and Reef and those. We've actually played that more part. than Azul and Reef. We've played it more than any other game this year. Yeah. Now, that, that, because it's a quick game, that's going to help a little bit. But um, yeah, it's a it's a, it's said, a big one in our house. We've played 50, 60 times. Yeah, we've played it over 50 yeah. times. And we only got it like halfway through the year. Yeah. So yeah, the, that that's why this is definitely an undiscovered gem. Yeah. So welcome to our third category, category the third. It's <laughs> <laughs> see she was surprised as opposed, by, as opposed to the fourth. <laughs> yeah, she was surprised by my intro. As yeah. we were by these these games, and these are the games we taught. They wouldn't be that good that we just buy them for mainly usually for the team and how they looked. In fact, by both of them, these it's basically by how they looked. So I was downstairs one night, it was late. I was somehow on Amazon U US. And I went, Jaws, it's only $20. Shipped to Ireland. Okay, I'll get that. And probably forgot about it for about a month and then turned up at the door. I went, Look, I bought something and I thought, went, how much did you pay? For? It's like, oh, okay, you only pay $20. So we'll give this a go. <laughs> so I played as the shark. No, I, Nettie played as the shark. Damn right, I did. And I played sure. as the shark hunter. <laughs> Two rounds later, the shark was dead in the water. <laughs> You have to retell that story now, yeah. didn't you? That's so unfair. So much fun. I dropped the balls in the water and blew her up. And then I dropped the balls in the water and blew her up again. No, what actually happened was I was being a really sneaky shark. And I was being really good at it. I was all being invisible. And then he got me, he found me on the first turn. And I was, but the thing is, right, when you find the shark in Jaws, which is obviously the aim of the game, right? There are humans versus the shark. Want to kill the shark because the shark eat people in boats and beaches. Um, so he found me in the first turn because the first part of the game is like a hidden movement thing. Yeah. So I was being the shark. And then I was like, I'm going to be really, really clever and I'm not going to move at all. And he'll never find me because he'll think I moved. <laughs> and he found me. It was so depressing. I got to be a shark for all of two minutes. Oh, then you got to attack my boat. Yeah, that's, that's the best thing about this game. You flip it over flip and then over. the shark attacks the boat. Yes, but of course, you see, the shark has to have done reasonably well in the first phase to have any cards to eat the humans yeah. in the second phase. Yeah, the more swimmers the shark eats in the first phase, the better mm -hmm. it is in the second phase. Yes. And for a really, you know, a licensed game, this was a massive surprise. Yeah. Mm. You liked it then? I really enjoyed it. I loved it. And then I got to play as the shark. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell how that went, people. We yeah. didn't survive. 
<laughs> no one survives first contact. You just ask a bigger box. I know. I need. I don't know. I need a better brain. Um, Jaws is a really interesting one because it's an IP game, right? So you don't necessarily expect it to be particularly robust or good because normally people buy those things because they're a fan of the, the fandom or whatever yeah. it is, right? So Jaws. Yeah, okay, thought it might be kind of fun or whatever, but this is actually a real game. Um, It's got very good mechanics. It's got some really nice 70s style artwork, which I really yeah, appreciate. No, and it doesn't have photographs from the movie, so that also enhanced it. And it's got some cute meeples, you get your own boat, and it's a really Jaws. fun. Um, it's unusual. We don't normally play games like this because they're like one versus many games usually end up with this, you know, you and we have no chances. Have you ever lost this game? No. 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 To be fair, we haven't played it a ton because, you know, 2020 and all that. And I would never play it with him one on one. But um, if you have a group that like the one versus many thing, I think yeah. this is a spectacular game, actually. It's very good. Oh, it's very good. It's very enjoyable. Very right. good stuff. Yep. So, yeah, so that's Jaws, which we didn't think was going to be any good. No, but it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty darn good great. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, my um, disappointing game that turned out to be slightly less disappointing. Um, goes to Tang Garden. This is my nominee and this is from Thunder Griffins. There's a lot of Griff games. There's Eco Griffin games, Thunder Griff games. I think it's Thunder Griff. I think it's Thunder Griff. Oh, we've got to say Jaws was from, not the album. Uh, Ravensburger. Is it Ravensburger? Yeah. Ravensburger. I should put some info up on the screen if I ever have space. Hopefully yeah. I'll do a piece at the end of each section and we'll have all the details yeah. for you. Um, so yeah, so I'm talking about um, Tang Garden, which is a game about building a garden and you have particular characters who are going to go for a walk in the garden and there's particular sites and things they're going to want to see so your job is to build a garden put these cool things in it so they can see them and then place down the model to score points they don't walk they just stand no they there. stand their spots where they go yeah. um so this game um you might have seen pictures of it because it is ridiculously ridiculously good looking yeah. it's got beautiful miniatures and pagodas and lots of beautiful art like it it's really really lovely and the idea of the game i think is actually very chill as well like a little Takedo yeah. something like that like we're having a nice adventure kind of in the garden it's not a very competitive game but I heard that the symbols in it were supposed to be all kinds of rubbish and um, that they would be difficult to read and it made the game very hard to play that didn't stop my beating heart um I couldn't help it I just I just wanted to try it on my own we've been through games with bad symbols before we thought maybe we could crack it um yeah the symbols are terrible the game is terribly flawed um like every it's the way you have to put the model on top of the symbol so then you have to check what the yeah. symbol is afterwards yeah um like it's just like in every opportunity this game had to do something that was easy to read they chose to just put in beautiful art instead um it is beautiful and it's a lovely lovely game but you know getting to grips with it and trying to understand where all symbols go where is difficult so like i said the game is flawed but um, I went into it knowing it was flawed, and so I was expecting it to be complete rubbish. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's There's an actual game in there, and it's very kind of chill and fun to play. Yeah, it's easy. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. Um, so, yeah, that is kind of my surprise of the year. I expected it to be way, way worse than that. But yet again, I don't know if that's just because my expectations were lowered in the first place. <laughs> I wonder if I had bought it not knowing this, would I have been more disappointed? I don't think so. I think you, you like the tactile nature yeah. of it. Yeah, I, I wanted a game that was kind of quiet. Yeah. Lots of games very noisy and busy. You're doing this, that, the other. Tank Garden is nice and quiet. Something yeah, it's about just like, it. what, mm. side, what screen am I looking at? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right, so who's going to be our winner, right? Oh, there can only be one winner here. Jaws eats Tank Garden. Yeah, it kind of does. No, Jaws is a fabulous game, and it's one we really didn't expect much from at all. No. So. It was, that was a really big surprise. So yeah, Joss, good stuff, especially if you've other humans to play with. Or you and your human like playing one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that. Some yeah. humans enjoy that. I would play one-on-one. -on -one. I know, but I wouldn't like to. <laughs> I know where this ends. Misery, <laughs> misery, people. All right, so let's move on to section the third. Fourth. <gasps> Fourth, we're motoring along. Okay. okay. Okay, so we've made our way to entry number four on our list. And this is the spot we have that, I think we've had this every year where we've gone for the Bang For Your Book Award. Um, and in my mind, I think it's important to note that not all games need to be expensive Kickstarter titles to be fun. You, sh you know, there's all yeah. sorts of games you could enjoy and get lots of value out of that don't have to cost the earth. 
and we want to include some of these in you know this section to, exactly. to, to yeah. yeah to recognize their due these diligence. These are cheap but great games. Yes, cheap but great games, and we can all do with more of those in our life for sure. Exactly. Um, so my nominee is a game we may have mentioned earlier, um, and this is Sakura from Osprey Games. And as we said, it is a very simple kind of reorganizing the lion game where you're following the emperor in the garden and you want to be as close to him as possible without touching him. No touchy, yeah. COVID, no touchy. COVID, yeah, COVID game yeah. Um, for sure. Um, and it's just this fun, simple thing. And I'm pretty sure we didn't play a ton for it, like you said earlier. I think it was a fiver. It and Samurai Gardener were a fiver together. And we bought, no, we and we bought to, London. Was it London? Yeah, London's London, late. Yeah. London was like um, was like 10. 15. Something like that. Either way, Osprey games occasionally seem to have these kind of sales. And you're like, is this game any good because it's so cheap? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. It's got Renner Knizia's name on the front. That way, they are nicely made games. Although the cards in Sakura are awful. Let no one tell you otherwise. They're cards that stick together. So yeah. that's the only point where you feel the cheapness. Um, but otherwise, it's a really fun... There's a lot of game in there, I think, for your, your value. Yeah. yeah, so I definitely think you get your bang for your book award. And you can play lots of games for it really quick because it's a really quick game as well. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that impressed me price-wise. What so about you? For me, um, it's another game by Ryan Akinsia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably the most known game he has this year, My City, which is, you get for about 30, 25, 30 euros, depending on where you get it from. Mm -hmm. um, it is a tile laying legacy game. From Cosmos Games. Is it Cosmos? Yes, it's Cosmos. Yes. Say hello to Cosmos Games, they're lovely people. Cosmos. Yeah, well, they're lovely people. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, when we looked at this one, we was like, we lo I love tiling. That, that is less of a tile layer than That's I am. That's not true. I like tiling games. It's I don't like, like polyamino tile laying. It's a bit of a difference, people. I don't mind putting perfect squares down. Yeah. It's when you want to shape them into things. It's yeah. weird. But yeah. this one has impressed me knowing. It is really, for such a simple rule set, it is an amazing amount of game that you get out of it. Mm -hmm. And even the base box, it's a legacy game, but the legacy game lasts for 24 sessions. Yeah. So like that, if you get 24 games out of any game these days, that's amazing. If you actually, if you get 10 games out of any game yeah. these days, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And each time, the way it works is you there is eight envelopes. Each one contains three scenarios. You're building a city, in case anyone was curious. Yeah. And you're building it out of polyonimo shapes. If you haven't heard of this before, you could check out my review video. For yes, like, what's review? What's it's right here. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's here. I don't know. I'm on the wrong side of the camera today. It's all I'm all over the place by inviting you into my sacred space. Um, but yeah, if you haven't heard of my city, you should definitely go and look it up. It's fantastic. It's a yeah. really, really good game. Um, and also a really good value. Excellent value for, yeah. for the money. Yeah. See, about well, Cosmos Games, it's got Cosmos Games components. So you're not getting something really, really fancy uh, here. But I don't think you need it. No, the, There's good game. Like the quality of the components is actually quite good. Like the card quality is good. Mm -hmm. Like the the cardboard stock for the pie almost is good. Mm, yeah, but it's it's not like standing any special. But yeah. then again, when you see what you pay for it and how much game you get for it, yeah. there's no minis. No, it's no miniatures in this game. There's no metal coins. Um, but you know what? It's just solid. It's solid and it's good. Solid. And I think it's good value. I don't think you'd be disappointed with what you got inside the box and how much play you get out of it. Exactly. And the winner is... Well, it has to be sure, right? Because oh, yeah. the fiber. I don't think it's going to top that. No. No, no. I, don't, I think it was untoppable. Like, we were working this out mathematically. Like, so how much money, you know, did this cost us per game to play? Yeah, you know, we've played, like, what, 20 games to Sakura. Yeah, and we've played a lot of it. And, yeah. you know, we've played a good lot of My City, too. We've more to go. I'm trying to, like, lengthen we're, the next We're about there. 15, 16 games, games in. in. We're almost there. Getting there, yeah, getting there. And Curious. also with my city, when we finish, there is a non-legacy side on the other yeah, side. Yeah, so you can play, you can play on. Apparently, we'll have to see what that's you like. You know, I suspect what we'll do is buy a second copy and go through the campaign a second time. <laughs> so yeah, so we actually, yeah, we've had some good uh, watermelon bargains yeah. this year. What I would call yeah. bargains, and they were games we bought from you. That doesn't even include games we traded for. No. Um, so yeah, so those are our best bang for a book. Have you found any bargains this year? Is there something in the bargain bins that you think is well worth a try? Um, shout out in the comments below yeah. so everyone else can see where all the bargains are. This is the fifth question, the fifth nominee. Yep. And the category in this case is not in my wheelhouse. And what we mean by that is the, these are games that normally I wouldn't like. Uh, I would mm -hmm. kind of look at it and go, no, that's not, not for me. 
but we tried them anyway and they turned out to be quite good. Yeah. Now, I tend to not like dice rolling, light dice rolling games. Now, I love war games where I'm rolling masses of dice to mm -hmm. at my opponent who then rolls them back at me and hopefully I roll better than he rolls. But I tend to not like the um, Yahtzee type mechanic games. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, there's one that has trumped them all. It's called Lost Fates. It's a game by Roger Dorn and published by Elia Games. Rutger Dorn. Rutger Dorn. Yeah, Rutger Dorn. Dorn. Yeah, I've remembered. Yeah, and it got remastered version two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and it is the simplest game I could ever explain to you. You take eight dice, you roll them, mm -hmm. you look down at six possible casinos, and you go, I will take the four ones I rolled and put them in casino one. And then if I have the most dice in casino one at the end of the round, I win the money from casino one. And that looks like, like you can see how much money each casino is going to be worth at the end of the round. And the only rule that you have to follow is that the, if you pick a number, you must put all dice of that number into that casino. So it's, it's an area majority game. And it should be, you know, oh, this is terrible. I just roll dice and randomly play some places and hope for the best. But it's actually really fun and really tactical. And it's like, I could put the two sixes down, but then I have only six dice. But I put the one five down and then I have seven dice to roll next time. It's just, I really enjoy it. Uh, so Las Vegas is a game about making money in the casinos in Vegas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as Brian pointed out, you have a set of dice and what you're going to want to do is put the most dice of the number match in the casino in the casino to win the money there and get the payout. You pay over, play over four turns. Four rounds, yeah. Four rounds and the person with the most money will win. Um, and you think, yeah, rolling dice, real boring stuff. Um, but for some reason, this game is tremendously fun and I'm kind of good at it. I have a good <laughs> record at Las Vegas because I roll dice good. Um, and that's true. And I for, a dice <laughs> and for, a, for a game that's so simple, I don't know how it has so much depth to play. Like, we sit there playing it and go, we shouldn't like this, but it's really, really fun. Um, and it's so simple. You can, I, you know, I think it's chunky dice. I don't know. I think there's some intelligent choices to be made about deciding when to put dice where or when to go all in on a particular or a casino yeah. because obviously each time you put out a dice or multiple of dice you lose those from your pool so you kind of want to hold on to as much dice as possible for as long as possible so you can roll yeah. a better spread of numbers you know to take over different casinos um but it's it's fun and there's a lot of interactivity with it because you know you're like well you have two fives out there right now yeah. what's the chance of him rolling another five and then you're like well if i tie with him which is even yeah. more interesting nobody wins any money so then you're just trying to block everybody out of stuff for a game that really is just rolling dice and placing them next to numbers there's a there's a lot going on i think yeah. it's, a, it's a great it'll be game. fun when the court lands a place with a good number of players works calling yeah. well let's see who it is tell them the wrong fellow hello brian speaking bye right. okay, so that's the job i have to actually do business business, business 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 numbers numbers numbers, numbers. numbers. <laughs> so when we were now, so that was Las Vegas. That was Las Vegas. That's pretty cool. So this whole not in my wheelhouse shenanigans. I think yeah. there's actually a number of games this year that we've gotten that we wouldn't have normally tried yeah. that were a little bit outside our comfort zone. But there's one with which I stood firm for as long as possible until I just had to give in to your adorable face. <laughs> um, so this goes to Isle of Cats or the Isle of Cats is its title. Um, and this is a, a polyonimo game and this is why it's not in my wheelhouse. I can't do shapes. Um, in loads of games, I really can't do shapes. Um, and I know they're really popular at the moment. There are lots of games with shapes, like my city has, has shapes and things like that in it. But I just, I don't know, I just don't find it fun to have to try and piece everything together in the most, you know, economical way or whatever, whatever it is. So I love Casco was have lots of people talking about it. I'm always going to forget that the... The Isle of Cats. The it's just Isle of Cats. That's from City of Games, is what I should have said. Um, but anyway, um, so it is a polyonimo game where you're filling out your boat because you're rescuing cats from an island. Yeah. Mythical kind of cats, and they come in all sorts of colours and shapes and sizes. Before they're wiped out by some evil wizards. There's an evil boat. There's a boat. I don't know. I, there is vaguely a plot, right? In my mind, it was place the coloured shapes on your boat, please. Um, now, it comes with some additional extras, like your drafting cards that will help you rescue the cats or will give you victory. 
victory points at the yeah. end of the game. So it kind of takes it up a notch from your regular, regular polyonimo. Um, but I didn't want it in our house. So I was like, we'll never play it. This is awful. But himself here wanted it. So yeah. eventually when it became slightly cheaper than normal, I was like, look, here you go. This is my gift to you. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I'm still not a big fan. It's not one I would pull out off of the shelf. However, I have to admit that it's actually a pretty good game. And what's interesting about it is that everyone we've played it with really enjoys it. Yeah. Everyone likes it. It's just one of those crowd pleaser games, even if I am not the biggest fan. In fact, the last time we played it, I just was like, here's all my money, tell me where my cats go. Um, and it'll help. So that's always, that's always thankful. But it's something I wouldn't have thought um, I would like as much as I did. But it's um, that was me, you know, being brave, trying something new and different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the Isle of Cats. And the winner is... God, you were quick. You didn't even give us a minute to go have a little overview. You know, uh, a little uh, chat about things. You know, yeah. tell people what's going on. <laughs> you know, that kind of selfish. Uh, like, bam, right to the point. Right to the point. That's what I am. I am a <laughs> Uh, okay, so the winner for this category is... Las Vegas! Yeah, it kind of has to be. This is the only dice rolling game we have. Yeah, and, we, dice and we've been through a couple over the years. Because sometimes you think a new one comes out and it'll be alright. Yeah. And then it isn't. No, we no. tried dice rolling, we tried game Tokyo. Yeah, we just dice rolling into a thing, but for some reason Las Vegas is extra special. Yeah. So yeah, well worth having a look at that one. Um, I don't know why that game pleases everybody, including heavy gamers to light gamers to everybody. Everybody loves this game. Yeah. It's just, just good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's a just stuff. To mm. the point, you know, it's brainy without, without tax on the brain kind of thing. Yeah, and you just roll dice and take names. Mm. <laughs> is that a different <laughs> podcast? <laughs> it is. All right, let's move on to the next section. So you can't really have an award show without having the best dress list now, can you? No. So we're looking at some of the games that we felt were the most gorgeous or most enticing or the ones that look best on the table or had some really lovely art pieces. That's yeah. where we're going with this. So yeah, so the best dress in world game looks the best. Um, and I'm going to come out with something that I kind of can't help myself because the problem is no matter what other games I compare to this, how lovely they are, nothing can quite top it. And this is Joan of Arc from Mythic Games. And of course, I had to choose the miniatures game to be the most beautiful arty wise. But it's just that good looking. I just can't help myself. It looks amazing when it's set up on the table. It comes with its own tiny trees, comes with bits of scenery and, and such a variety of models that you could play forever and probably not try all of them out. And they are beautiful. And when everything's set up together, it's just it's so much fun. And it is really, really pretty. It's one of those games that always makes me want to take out my camera when I play it. I want to snap it because it yeah. is just it is just absolutely stunning and you get cool stuff um inside there so you get some historical people you're getting some angels some crazy demons god knows what else is in the box we haven't even got to yet yeah the gin yes the gin who does not play Romy apparently how boring <laughs> um but still <laughs> so joan of arc is my, is my pick um and i wonder as well would a lot of people pick games with miniatures as some of their most beautiful games because we've got a couple of Eno Tool games in the collection and they are gorgeous. But I think there's something special about miniatures. Yeah. There's a, something about them, isn't the, there? Yeah, definitely in Joan of Arc. Even for the small scale miniatures, they're, mm. they're really nice. Especially the larger scale models are, are great. Especially that giant um, end of the world beast that I had last day. Mm. Yeah, so he was, took up most of the table. Um, but they're cool and they're I interesting. still couldn't they're hunt down your, your angels. <laughs> I'm undefeated at Joan of Arc. I have won games, just not against Anthony. Yes, exactly. I Dice like rolling, my weakness. You should just be thankful that you taught me to war games so well that now I'm undefeatable. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you pick for your best looking game then? So my best looking game came up uh, is Tang Garden. Ah yes, from Thunder Games. Thunder Games. <laughs> games. Uh, so Tang Garden is a game where you're basically getting people to look at things. Yes. And you want them to set up scenery on the edge of the board, which are these lovely pieces of cardboard with great artwork on them and terrible symbols, but great, great ah, artwork. You got beautiful it looks vistas. really pretty on the table. You got these um, full-size pagoda, uh, pagodas, yeah. which you put your miniatures in, which mm. cover all the symbols on the board. But that doesn't matter. This game just looks <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. The only problem with this game is the actual gameplay, but 
You can not say anything about the looks. <laughs> it's true. It is ridiculously, it's ridiculously good, good looking. looking. Yeah, it's Zulanda good looking. should be in this game. Yes, it's just that. It's that gorgeous. Yes, it's... Mm -hmm. So that's my nominee, but the winner is... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give me a chance to say anything nice about Tang Garden. Okay, say something nice about Tang Garden. About Tang Garden. I think it's just some, something very beautiful about all the use of colour, the use of tokens. It's 3D, so it's layering things out on the board too. It's not just two-dimensional. Um, and you've got the different characters and they have beautiful artwork as well um, that all want different things out of your board. Like overall, like it's, it really is a treat actually. Opening that box is a treat. Yeah. You open it up and it's like, ooh, it's good, it's miniature. It's got a little bit of everything yeah. without going over the and top. And a nice insert. Yes, it's and a lot. nice insert. Yeah, Joan of Arc could do with an insert <laughs> instead of this these stray boxes <laughs> in boxes. Um, okay, so the winner is... I believe it's... Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. Yeah. Um, I think you do too, because yeah. it is it is kind of stellar, um, and it's it's just so enticing when you set that thing up. You want to play with it, and you want to touch everything. Mm. It's got that kind of feel to it. So yeah, I I like I like it a lot, and I like that it's a bit crazy. I like that it's history meets fantasy meets what the hell is this? Um, and so it always kind of keeps you on your toes. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah, aesthetics wise, it's pretty darn cool. All okay. right, so let's move on to the next section. Next section. Question seven is what is the best team in a board game? <laughs> so in my case, I chose the game that allows you to play as such historical characters as John of Luxembourg, mm -hmm. the Black Prince, and the Beast from Revelations. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary herself. <laughs> and Mary herself. Well, actually, we don't know if it's Mary. It's just the one who's given birth to, to Jesus. The, the, Jesus. So we kind of suspect it's Mary? Well, maybe she was, maybe, maybe she, you know, she was a peasant girl. And, you know, for a game that we thought would be just, you know, putting down some miniatures on Which a board. Which game is it? The game is <laughs> <laughs> Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, from Mythic Games. Yes. Not Monolith Games, so it's the one I always mix them up with. They both begin with M and make miniatures. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a game that you pretty much everything is just dripping in team. Mm -hmm. And you have the English versus the French, and you get to relive the Hundred Year War. And at the same time, relive the legends of the time. Yeah, I was learning a lot about history. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. As in John of Luxembourg was famous for being blind and had to be led into battle by his two retainers on either side of him. He yes. died in that battle. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is this, that that is an actual character and what was fun was he would, because he was blind, he would swap who controlled him at any one yeah. time because he didn't know which side of the battle he was on. I thought it was kind of smart and fun. It's very thematic actually when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah. It is quite thematic indeed, so I think that's a good pick. And your pick? <sighs> I had a hard time doing this one, right? Because I think there are lots of, especially kind of Euro games these days, that are tackling really interesting themes. Um, the one I'm going to stick with though is not that new a game at all, but it's a game that when I posted about it online I realised not as many people knew it as I thought they should and this is Village um, from Inca and Marcus Brand and it's published by Pegasus Spiele or Egbert Spiele or whatever version it's published by all sorts of people um, and this is a game about killing your villagers. Um, no, yes. you're not killing your villagers. No, They're you aging. know you are. Yeah, no, you're killing them. There's no They're doubt about it. The first line of the rule book is life in this village is tough. And it is a generational worker placement game where you send your people out to work, and the aim of the game is to have them die in the right graveyards. Um, well, no, to die in the, you put them into different certain places, like job a church, professions, yeah. Put them out on the council. Put them to and uh, if they're really bad, you send them to the inn. It works good. They can end up in an unmarked grave. I send them off on fast journeys and bury them at sea. Yes, you can do such things. But what happens in the game is that you know time is your resource. And there's only so much time before your meatballs die. Yeah. So you have to spend your time wisely. You kill them, time kills us. Yes, I know, but you were in charge of time, therefore you kill your meatballs. Um, and the first couple of times I played this, we had big issues because I didn't want to kill my meatballs. So the no. game was dragging on way longer than it was supposed to because the mechanic is to... I was in the graveyard with all my guys. And yeah, they... and mine were all holding on, out, holding off for hope <laughs> and praying they were good to die. But that is what the game is about. Um, I just think it's such an unusual theme. I think it's a really interesting way to talk about death. 
mm-hmm. actually, too. Um, you find very few games that treat it like that because it's not silly in this, like, oh, they've died, haha. Mm-hmm. There is a place for them to go, but there is something um, quite damning about the fact that they disappear after so many rounds. It's like, <laughs> I did all these things, but now my people, I'm you know, my, I, now I they're not go, now they're guys. I'm not the Yeah, I know the mayor of the village, he now has to go into the graveyard. Um, and you but that opens up his post to other people, to the younger generation. Exactly. So there's something really cool thematically about all of this. Um, and I think it's a, fa- it's a really interesting game. It treats death nicely and in an interesting way. Yeah. And it's really fun to play. Let's not forget that part. Oh, yeah. It's a blast. Um, so, yeah. So if you haven't heard of um, Village by now, um, yeah, that's one you should look right, at. Right, the, the Marcus and the brand. Yeah, like I said. Yeah, yeah we, we really like their designs too. They do all sorts of crazy cool stuff. And you have a second nominee? I did, but I'm not going to nominate it now. I had to decide on the fly. Scoville was really close there. Because Scoville is a game about making peppers. Making yeah. spicy, spicy peppers. And I think that's an awesome theme. But I had to give it to, to, to Village. Because awesome. death is awesome. So, um, <laughs> who's so who's the winner of the Skyrim? Right? The winner of the Skyrim is Village. Yay! I totally deserve it. So both are, both are nominees about peasants in, in medieval times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very true very true my peasants are armed though yes you aren't peasants mine were just living their quiet life before yeah, they taught life, off the morty off, coil you know, um, making sure they had kids yeah. got married <laughs> yeah so what are some of your favourite thematic games like you know there's more than just you know we're trading in the Mediterranean these days yeah. isn't there so I'd like to see it yeah you can play the shark I can rescue cats from magical islands yeah, like there's, there's definitely, I think, been a bit of a like a renaissance in terms of ideas, um, as long as you don't look at your old games too closely. <laughs> All right, let's roll on to the next section. Next one. So we've made it to the point in the video where we're ready to, you know, announce the nominees for best supporting actor. And by this we mean um, the best filler game. I think the game that, you know, on game night will lead into the bigger, brighter games, um, but has its own its own thing going on all by itself. So yeah, we're, yeah. so by filler I think we're going for smaller games, shorter games. Short, quick. Yeah, mm-hmm. entertaining. Yeah, so my nominee um, for the best filler games is the newly acquired um, It's a Wonderful World. Um, so this has got a really unusual title. This is the first thing I think about this game. I'm like, why is it called this? And it's got a fairly unusual cover as well, where it's like all... You've got the military on one side and you've yeah. got the, the civilian the politician other. on the other side. Yeah, it all looks a bit like... I don't know, 1940s retro future. Yeah, retro, something. retro future is probably the best way to describe. Yeah, it. like, <laughs> and the and the thing about this game is that it's a it's a card game. Let, let's not question it here. In which you are playing cards and you're getting resources to fill up the cards to be able to use those to get further resources. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, you know it's one of those, right? You you'll have come across this idea before. Um, what's interesting with this, I think, is actually the cards themselves are really really cool. I think the artwork is yeah. really really nice. Um, and it's got really satisfying gameplay because you can see how things are going to turn out. You're able to calculate yeah. so it. So it has a very unusual engine and normally mm. you produce all your resources at once. In this, you produce them in sequence. Yes. Yeah. And anything you build in one phase can activate later. So yeah. you could build in the first phase and it might activate in the third phase. So it'll give you some more stuff that you can activate in the fourth phase. Yeah. It'll activate again in the fifth phase. It's kind of like a cascade effect, really. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you, you do have to do a lot of planning on your turn. But the card play of it, which is, you know, deciding what you're going to put down in your tableau. You can also discard cards for resources too. So deciding what you keep and what you get rid of. And of course, yeah. there's drafting, which I hate at two player. Hate drafting a two player. So yeah, we're circumventing that a little bit. A two players, really? Like drafting with more people, I get it. Not yeah. not with two so much. Yeah, I just like deck building. You do like deck building. And it does have that feel to it. You got you get to touch a lot of cards. Yeah. Um, so I I think I really enjoy it as filler. It's just satisfying and fun. Um, and I like I like that feeling of I've set my own goals, I'm going to complete them. I think it's got a nice thing like that about it. So that's my nominee for like my new hot filler. Because the cats won a different category, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I really really like. It. We've played a lot actually, considering we've only had a, like a week or two. Yeah. Um. So it's it bodes well for fu- for future adventures. Okay. So my nominee is San Juan. 
Who? San Juan is a really cool um, tableau builder. I suppose it is a tableau builder. Yeah, it's a tableau yeah, builder. It's a tableau builder. It's a tableau builder in which you have a action selection mechanism. But when you select the action, your opponent also completes the same action. Yeah. And you will get a bonus to the action for when you select it. So the big part of this is timing your turns so to so that you get the benefit of the action and your opponent doesn't get the benefit of the action. Well, you always get a benefit. Yeah, but you can time it so that like no. um, so. San Juan is a game in which you're building a city and you're doing it with a deck of cards. And to play so the action, to play because I keep waiting for you to explain it yourself, and it doesn't happen. I like yeah, so, so it's a city building game in the sense of a tableau and you have a big handful of cards and to play cards into your tableau will cost you cards. Yeah. So cards are super important. So you're gonna to wanna to draw plenty of them to have them for resources yeah. to be able to build things. Ah. Um and you can only build so many buildings before the game yeah. runs out. And your actions are determined, as you said, by an action selection thing. There's a row which you can choose from. There's a better action if it's your turn and a lesser action if it's not your turn that yeah. your opponent will get to perform. And that's what makes it interesting. <laughs> also, once you select it, they can't select it for it's locked out for a while. So, so if you can time it right, you can lock them out. Mm -hmm. Especially if the build action, so that you can build when you can build when you want to build, and they don't have the cards to build. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of timing going on for sure. Yeah. But um, it's a really nice tableau builder, though, it isn't is, it? It's very satisfying, very quick, very quick. Apparently, mm -hmm. I can't build the library. <laughs> library is my favorite card. Um, no, you, yeah, it's true. You can't build a library. <laughs> yeah, you build everything. Else. But I give you everything else, which yeah. is fair. I don't build the other one you really like. Can you remember which one it is? The one that you gain all the cards. Is it chapel? Chapel. I think it's you chapel. You have built chapel. You also have built a library, but we've come to a, con a consensus now. Yeah, you always build a chapel anyway. No, not really. Or the harbor. Harper's not anybody's. That's that's equal. Yeah. That's equal footing. So you can see what happens when we play together. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. it's good. Isn't it, it is a really good game. And you, if you like, color. you should. Mm -hmm. It's cheap enough to pick up. Yeah, that seems to be my general word for the Well, I don't know. We traded for ours, so you just don't know. Us? Yes, we traded for ours. The good thing is, is if you like Race for the Galaxy and wanted it in a slightly different flavor. Um, this is it. Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to do buildings and stuff like that, um, and it, th there's a lot of cards in there, so it always feels kind of fresh too. Yeah. I think it's a good. I think it's a good filler game. Um, we've had a good bit of fun with it as well. Um, so it's good. Yeah, I yeah. like it, and everyone gets a go every time, so that's always cool. And the winner is. Mm -hmm. Did we decide the winner? We did decide the winner. Did we? We did. Now, if you had to choose again between these two games, Sam One and It's a Wonderful World, what do you think we decided? I kind of want to say it's a wonderful world. Are you sure? No. You want to phone a friend? I might like to phone a friend, but they wouldn't know the answer. I I'm going to have a second. Ding ding. Brian. Call <laughs> yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah it's good. Brian, I need, I need some help on this talk show. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So, what, what's the, the winner for, um, you know, best filler? The best filler and what goes to It's a Wonderful World. I knew it. I was right. I didn't need to waste my <laughs> phone a friend on you. I'll wait for the 50 50 section later. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all 50-50. I think It's a Wonderful World came up here just because um, it's kind of new and fresh for us as well. Yeah. It feels fresh, but also it feels really fun. It reminds me of some other card games, but I can't figure out which. It seems to be an amalgamation of things we just it's enjoy. Like the, it's kind of like the simple thing, Dominion, that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, it's with... got some kind of feel to it, I think, that makes it... It's been a while since we felt like we had a super good card game. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's got, it, it's just hitting all those buttons, right? Exactly. All those buttons. All right, let's move on to the next section. of this award show was only one more award to bestow and because we don't do like our favorite games of 2020 kind of things mostly because i couldn't decide i tried we had the category written down and i failed we're going with the best newcomer this year to our collection so i think that seems like a fair yeah, thing that's fair enough. yeah well, so we didn't something have to go with the 2020 game no it was some a game we got this year that we think is deserving of an, a newcomer award that is particularly notably special yeah 
notably special. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. And if anyone has been listening to me on Twitter um, at any point recently, you'll know how much I like this game. And this is My City from Cosmos Games and Ryan with Canizia. Um, so as we've talked about earlier, my, my city is a polyonimo game, meaning I should hate it. I should hate it with the fibre of my being. Yes, you should. Um, and, you know, you're filling out your player board with all these different pieces. Um, and you're trying to fill up as much of it as possible while leaving certain spots and open. And we're saying the piece going, Brian, why doesn't this rotate this Yeah, way? but don't go back to front. Like, what? who designed this? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Right, right, we know this. Um, <laughs> but um, it, there's a lot of things in it that I shouldn't like, but I really, really loved. And the special thing about my city is the fact that it's a legacy game. So as you play into the game, different things happen. There are different rules. There are new pieces. There are all sorts of things to unlock and explore. Yeah. And it makes it very, very addictive. Um, that's what my review said. I found it very addictive, but I just wanted to play multiple games of it. Because it's a very quick game. It takes like, yeah. what, 10, 15 minutes to play? Uh, probably 20 minutes. Depends how much debating you're doing about where your pieces are going to go. And I'm going to give you a pro tip actually to do at my city while we're here, which is something my husband invented, which is he would take pieces that he wanted to place later on and place them next to the board, right round the edge, so that you would know where to put them next. And when I first saw him doing it, I gave out to you for it. I was like, that's cheating. Then I probably copied the idea myself to help my turns go faster. Um, but it's a it's a really wonderful game. We had a lot more fun with it, I think, than either of us imagined we would. Yeah. So it was a, it's a real standard. And we still have more to go, which is the best part. Um, so I think this is a great game for families. I think it's a great game for gamers. Actually, I just think it's a great game. It's, great game. it's one of the, the nicest surprises of 2020. Um, so yeah, so that's my nominee. What so my you? nominee goes way back in time to the holidays, I think, of 2013. Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing. Run then anyway. Hands out. Come on. The name sounds boring. The cover is boring. What is it? I kind of like the cover. I kind of like the cover too. It's it's, it's like it's antiquated, antiquated looking. Yeah. yeah, but it's colourful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so the game is about it's kind of um, if you play Ticket to Ride where you you're route building between different areas, but unlike in Ticket to Ride, your pieces don't stay on the board necessarily. Mm -hmm. So you have this kind of puzzle of I want to build routes, but my route doesn't stay on the on the board. And you score points then for controlling the different cities rather than controlling the different um, routes. routes connecting the cities. Mm -hmm. And it's this great puzzle between do I control the cities or do I upgrade my own personal player board mm -hmm. and the tension between the two. Mm -hmm. And it has this lovely mechanic of if you control the city and someone builds a roof from the city, you get a victory point. Just one. Because it doesn't sound like much. Mm -hmm. But in this game, one point is a lot. Yes. And it just, it feels so good to play. And it was very refreshing. And apparently it's a big box without this Soon. year. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the big boxes on the way, but they've got rid of the two player maps. Yeah. So uh, don't know what's happening there, people. Um, Hands of Totality is an interesting one because it combines route building like you might know from other games. But um, the thing with your player board is very interesting because you, it starts with all of the pieces on it and your actions get better as you take pieces off, you know, like sides yeah. style. Um, and that gives you more pieces then to put out on the board so you can do more things. And I think that's really, really interesting. The boards themselves are beautiful, actually. As the game the, is gorgeous. five looking. actions that you can do? I think so. I think it's only five actions. You're very, like, you're limited in choices, um, but not in scope. And I just, I, I think it's very good. It's very bright and very colourful. It feels very fresh for something that's not so recent. Yeah. Um and so you know I think this is a good, this is a good game actually this was a really nice surprise this yeah too, wasn't it, was, it? it was like mm. it's one that's been on this for a long time but yeah we, we managed mm. to pick up a copy this year yeah exactly it's an older game so you know how those are you're not going to see them in the every day yeah but it was yeah it was very very good stuff I think we really liked on this time and yeah. especially if you want to step up from a game like Ticket to Ride this is would be the next kind of logical step it and turns and taxis i think are the always that i would always yeah. recommend for the step up from ticket to ride if you're a big fan of route building games they're, they're all based in games. germany i know germans make the best games <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love me some germans right okay so so the winner the is another german game <laughs> my city my city yeah not Although yeah. I love Hansa, I think that's a great one, Hansa yeah. Titanica. But yeah, my city is just special. I think that's the only way to put it. I think it feels special when you play it. It feels interesting and fun. Yeah, just still like it a lot. That's yeah, super good. 
Um, so yeah, so that, that's the end of our categories. So um, we got what? Oh, everything, I'm sure. Um, but I want to thank everybody who gave us some ideas for some of the questions that we came up with. So the Tabletop Games blog and the Jones Family Plays Games. They gave us some suggestions, so thank you kindly. And of course, we want to hear your answers. What did we get wrong? What did we get right? Yeah. Is there anything in here you've never heard of before? Or things you think we should have heard Is of? Is there anything you want to show? Um, that's right now. Recommendations? <laughs> I think I've sold a couple of copies of my city. That that's like the pride of joy. Although that is the best part of being a reviewer, having to buy a game and really like it. That's what he said. That's pretty it's special. The ego, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I need all the ego I can get around here. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like what I do, like and subscribe to the channels where I normally do review stuff. Um, and but that's it for another year. We took yeah. you back into the games room. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be playing more games and we'll be back with some future things really soon. So thanks. Nice. I know, we're in my office. <laughs> I have to pull you in here for the day for filming. Uh, so we'll go back, back and we'll, games, we'll right? go back and play games. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm wishing you all like a, a happy festive season, guys, and a happy new year. And we'll talk more about games real soon. Yeah, so take care, everybody. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.